Not new to the scene, but new to my studio, the Asus ZenBook Pro Duo is what creators actually need in a touch bar. An entire extra screen, always connected, always ready, and easily on the go. Let's check out how it performs on over 14 benchmark tests for video editing, design, and 3D modeling. Let's get rocking. If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're going to find the best tech and tools for creative professionals. So if that sounds like your kind of place, consider subscribing and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. Also, if you're curious about the exact prices and even more in-depth specs of this model as we're going through the video, you can head down into the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do use that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Also, if you want to get a discount on this computer, or any computer over at Computer Upgrade Kings, you can use the discount code BEN3. The ZenBook Pro Duo is what I think Apple was hoping to accomplish with their touch bar. A small secondary screen loaded with easily accessible apps to boost your productivity. Asus went all out and has given creative professionals a secondary 14 inch 4K matte display to unlock a whole new level of possibilities on a single machine. Pulling this laptop out of the box, I am greeted by one of the most attractive top covers I have ever seen on a laptop. This all aluminum laptop features a radial brushed steel blue top cover reminiscent of no other laptop I've seen on the market. Beautifully beveled edges and sturdy build quality make this laptop one of my top picks as far as engineering alone is concerned. As I pull open the top cover to reveal the interior of this laptop, I am easily able to do this with one hand, even with a laptop rising nearly a full inch off of the table surface. The slight rise on the laptop allows a more comfortable experience of the secondary screen, keyboard, and trackpad. It also acts as a great tunnel to funnel airflow through in order to keep this computer running as cool as possible with the massive i9 processor and RTX 2060 GPU in this laptop. The screen is a glossy 15.6 inch 4K OLED display at a 16 by 9 aspect ratio with a 60 hertz refresh rate. It also ranks high on the color gamut range, reaching 100% sRGB, 94% Adobe RGB, and 100% DCI P3, all at a Delta E of 1.79. The screen comes with a built in webcam as well for those important virtual meetings. This laptop has a narrow but optimal selection of ports. As always, I tell people, think about your workflow. What ports are you going to use on the day to day? That's the ports you should be prioritizing when considering the ports on this laptop. Just like the StudioBook 17 I recently reviewed, this keyboard might be the best I've ever used. It is very quiet, but the keys are still snappy and respond very well. And although it is snappy, it also has a soft push under your fingers. I'm seriously impressed by this keyboard. Although the trackpad is in an odd position, it is responsive and accurate. A few months back, I reviewed the Acer Concept D9, a laptop built for serving illustrators, digital painters, and the like. It has a very similar trackpad placement, but it was not as sensitive and accurate as the one on the ZenBook Pro Duo. At first, the positioning is odd, but because it is done so well by Asus, I was able to adjust very quickly and actually ended up really enjoying the placement of the trackpad. There are a variety of helpful shortcut keys on the keyboard deck. You can quickly exchange screens, so what is on the top goes to the bottom, and what is on the bottom goes to the top. You can quickly toggle between fan modes, access the snippet tool to quickly create screen captures, turn on the webcam and turn off the webcam so you don't get cyber spied on. There's a lot of really great options there. Now, for my thoughts on the second screen and touchscreen pen capabilities. To draw directly on the screen with the laptop at a 35 to 45 degree angle is awkward and uncomfortable. I was constantly fighting to stable my hand on something keep the screen from shaking and my arm from getting tired. So honestly, when it comes to the two-in-one laptops for illustration or digital painting, something like the Asus ZenBook Flip is going to be far more practical. With the ability to flip the screen completely over, turning your laptop into more of a drawing tablet, it is a far more comfortable experience. On top of that, I found that the pen sensitivity was not as accurate as I hoped. I think it would be suitable for some quick design changes, but to produce an entire project via the pen touch screen would be frustrating to me. Okay, now for the good news. The secondary screen is wonderful. An on-the-go tool that I really think a lot of creators, once they get this tool, won't want to live without. As someone who is editing videos on a daily basis, 
I need, yes, I need two screens for my workflow. I usually rely on a few open windows to drag in necessary source files and preview clips as I'm building my edits. The secondary screen is perfect solution for me. I can have three separate windows open along the bottom of the screen for snappy workflow editing. This works well in a variety of other work environments such as Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, 3D modeling software, and more. I seriously dig this feature and it completely crushes Apple's attempts to boost our productivity with a one inch useless touch bar. Speaking of on-the-go productivity, how on-the-go is this laptop? Well, weighing in at 5.51 pounds and just shy of one inch thick at 0.94, it is not a thin and light laptop, but for the productivity and ability this machine packs into it, I think it is very suitable for the package size. However, I will say you should definitely bring the charger along for this laptop. Due to the immense power usage from the two 4K screens, the RTX 2060 GPU, and the i9 processor, you are looking at about three hours of web browsing and about an hour to an hour and a half of heavy design workflow with this 71 watt hour battery. Okay, now for the fun part. Let's get into the performance benchmarks, thermals, component usage, and noise tests. With the model I'm reviewing, it comes with the Intel 9th Gen Core i9-9980HK, 8 cores and 16 threads. The NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 with 6 gigs of VRAM at GDDR6, 32 gigs of RAM clocked at 2667 megahertz, and a storage drive of 2 terabytes SATA SSD. Starting things out with Photoshop, which is the program I use to see how well this laptop will perform for photographers, illustrators, and graphic designers, as it is the most intensive program in the Adobe CC design suite. The ZenBook Pro Duo handles all of these individual benchmarks very well and sits within the mid to high end of the performance charts, making it a very suitable laptop for any graphic designers, illustrators, or photographers. Moving on to the video editing benchmarks, I'm going to open up a 4K project with some B-roll and a variety of motion graphics and run it in the timeline to see how well it can handle playback. The RTX 2060 is able to run smooth playback in the timeline at full quality 4K without any drop frames. And for a render test, it is able to render out all of the 7,240 frames of motion graphics in 3 minutes and 23 seconds, which is above the average for rendering time on that test. For the exporting tests, I'm going to take a 9 minute 4K clip, place it into Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve and export it out. The ZenBook Pro Duo is able to export this 4K clip to 4K in 3 minutes and 1 second out of Premiere Pro and out of DaVinci Resolve in 9 minutes and 14 seconds. Now, 3 minutes and 1 second out of Premiere Pro is the absolute fastest export time I have personally ever seen on my channel. I am very amazed by this laptop's ability to efficiently and quickly export out of Premiere Pro. Now, if you want to save a little bit of time, you can export that same 4K clip to 1080p in 1 minute and 2 seconds another insanely fast export time, and out of DaVinci Resolve in 3 minutes and 58 seconds. I'm going to discuss the thermals, component usage, and noise produced during each of these tests. But first, let's take a look at how the ZenBook Pro Duo handles motion design and 3D modeling. After Effects was not an issue for the ZenBook, but I will note that my test showed it pulling benchmarks that were a little bit lower than the average laptop in its category. The Puget After Effects score was a 591, and the Puget After Effects render score was a 517. Moving on to the performance and 3D modeling test, Geekbench single core was a 1261, and the multi-core was a 7193. Snagging the top spot in my charts for single core performance and taking second place to the latest Ryzen 7 4800H. This laptop performed very well. The Cinebench R20 test came in at 3412, snagging the third place spot right behind the latest Ryzen 4000 series lineup. Blender Classroom GPU took 5 minutes and 32 seconds, and the Blender Classroom CPU took 14 minutes and 39 seconds. A lot of you have been asking for me to pursue 3D modeling tests in my reviews, and I have heard your requests, and here they are. For Autodesk 3DS Max, you have a score of 125.68, for Autodesk Maya, you have a 138.1, and for PTC Creo, you have a 114.16, and lastly, for SolidWorks, you have a 62.65, and you can see how these are ranking uh, against some of the other laptops that I've reviewed so far on my channel, and there'll be more to come in the future. If there are any other tests you would like me to run, please comment below. 
I would be happy to look into these tests and see if I can include them on my future reviews. Now that we know how it performs in each test, let's look at the temperature, component usage, and noise during some of these tests. At idle, the ZenBook Pro Duo is idling at around 31 to 35 decibels, with the fans sometimes kicking on here and there. In the Photoshop benchmark test, the noise got up to 44 decibels from the fan. In Premiere Pro 4K export, it got up to 49 decibels. In the Premiere Pro render, it got up to 50 decibels. And in the DaVinci Resolve export, it got up to about 50 decibels as well. The Asus ZenBook Pro Duo thermal test. At idle, the ZenBook Pro Duo sits at around 38 degrees Celsius. During the 4K export, the CPU stabilized at 85 degrees Celsius, but we saw up to 98 degrees Celsius during that export. So this laptop does run pretty warm, but as you can see, it performs extremely well according to the benchmark test. Premiere Pro 4K export, the GPU got up to about 75 degrees Celsius. In DaVinci Resolve, the 4K export stabilized at an even higher temperature of 92 degrees Celsius, and we saw a height of about 109 degrees Celsius. As far as the GPU is concerned during the image resolve, it stayed at around 73 degrees Celsius. Now during the Photoshop Puget benchmarks, we saw a high of 98 degrees Celsius and an average of 88 degrees Celsius in the CPU. And for the GPU, we saw around 60 degrees Celsius as Photoshop really doesn't use the GPU too much. All right, now let's look at the component usage of this laptop during each of these tests. During the Photoshop Puget Benchmarks test, the CPU saw a 15% usage, the GPU saw a about 0 to 15% usage, and the RAM saw about an 85% usage. Now, during the 4K export out of Premiere Pro, the CPU had a usage of about 20%, the GPU about 82%, and the RAM about 30%. Exporting out of DaVinci Resolve, the CPU saw about a 95% usage, the GPU a 30% usage, and the RAM a 33% usage. If you're looking for a laptop to substantially increase your in-office and on-the-go productivity, all inside of a relatively compact package with amazing screen resolution and color accuracy, then I would certainly pick up the Asus ZenBook Pro Duo, a laptop with the fastest export time out of Premiere Pro that I've ever seen on my channel. Again, if you're curious about the exact prices of this model, you can head down into the description below and click one of those links. Keep editing, keep designing, keep creating. I'm Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you in the next video.